Hey, everybody, I'm Ebony K. Williams, along with Kat Temp and Eric Bowling, and we are the Fox News Specialists. Senate Republicans debuting their long-awaited health care bill. It includes a repeal of Obamacare taxes on high-income households, rollbacks of expansions to Medicaid, and revamps insurance subsidies to low-income users. But it's hitting a major roadblock within the GOP. Four Republican senators, Ted Cruz of Texas, Ron Johnson of Wisconsin, Mike Lee of Utah, and Rand Paul of Kentucky are voicing their opposition to the bill in its current form, jeopardizing its passage. Senator Cruz spoke about it a short time ago. I want to get to yes, and the way to get to yes is fix the underlying problems, lower premiums, and I will happily be part of it. We can get there, and I think there are a lot of other senators who feel very much the same as I do. Senator Paul also elaborated on his opposition just a few moments ago with Neil Cavuto. Conservatives want a repeal bill. I want a bill that looks like, feels like, and is a repeal bill. My fear is that when I look at this, I keep reading it, and it's like, it sounds like Obamacare to me. It doesn't even sound like Obamacare light. In some areas, it may be Obamacare plus on the subsidy side. We can't have a bill that spends more than Obamacare in the first couple of years and call that a repeal bill. All right, Eric, epic shade there from Senator Rams. Yeah, Paul. Uh, Senator Paul is my very close friend. I spoke to him. I called him and said, what about this? And he said, no, we're going to hold out. He said there's going to be four of us, and I knew Cruz and Lee were going to, but Ron Johnson did as well. He calls this a, quote, horrible piece of legislation. And I said, so what are you going to do? He said, well, there's going to be a lot of dealing making that's going to have to happen. And I said, what if you can't get that done? He said, then they're going to have to scrap it, put it aside, and get on to tax reform. But they are very, very set on handling tax reform soon and next. Okay, Kat, uh, are you surprised by this much opposition from the GOP? No, I did not speak with him on the phone, but I do <laughs> I do agree with him. Uh, why are we also, I why are we giving... I number if you want. I, <laughs> I will text him a lot. <laughs> you might want to think twice about that. I know no bounds when it comes to texting. Um, and we're just also subsidizing insurance companies. Why are we giving tax dollars to insurance companies and they're going to make $15 billion a year? Yeah, I'm not, not down with that. It's not every day that I agree with Ted Cruz, but on this one, <laughs> I, I, got, I mean, seriously, it's shocking. But let's meet today's specialist. So he served at the local, state, and federal level of government. He's the founder of Caldwell Strategic Consulting, and he's a special correspondent for Extra TV. But he specializes in cooking a mean, gourmet catfish. Mr. General Caldwell is here. Thank you. And he's a scuba instructor, a retired Green Beret Master Sergeant, and the host of Outdoor Channel's hit series, Hollywood Weapons. But he specializes in the sweetest thing, rescuing senior dogs. Terry Shepard is here. <laughs> and a very important thing, Terry actually got into a car accident this morning, but still <laughs> managed to be here to be a Fox News specialist. That's what we call dedication. That's Thank right. You, Terry. Motivated. Yeah, motivated. man to his word. We like that. <laughs> uh, so, Mr. Cobo, I'll start with you. Uh, again, like I said, I really feel that the Republican Party had seven years on this, uh, and as somebody who uh, has been vocal about my criticisms of Obamacare, particularly the mandate, now I do see this bill takes that away, so I was pleased to see that, but the premiums, Gianno, I don't see where the premiums are coming down, and so I don't know where this uh, is such an improvement. Well, it's an interesting issue. One, I must say that this is absolutely better than what we saw come out the House. I thought that was a disastrous bill, personally. I think this is a much better representation. In addition, next week, we're going to see some amendments come to the floor on this particular piece of legislation. Now, when you so, say better, do you mean like kinder? Like, because I know that's, that's this is, this, this, <laughs> this is mean, said it was yeah, mean. mean, kinder thing. No, I think it's a, it's a better representation of what the American people want and deserve. If I want to go through some of the points on this, which I think to be great, because we know that Obamacare, uh, the premiums, especially in a place like Phoenix, it went up by 147 percent. That was a consideration. We know what the cost of it was. This will definitely bring down the cost of it. And it does something that I haven't heard anybody mention. It gives states the opportunity to impose work requirements on folks that are receiving uh, Medicaid. So those are folks who are not senior, folks who are not disabled mm -hmm. or pregnant. I think that's a really, really, really good issue there. Okay, Terry. So Gianno's saying that it will definitely bring down premiums, but some of us, me and Ted Cruz, seeing out of this, <laughs> not quite convinced, you say? Well, let me say this first. As you can tell, I don't have a lot of hair. Uh, and if I did have a lot of hair, I'd be pulling it out because when you read all these things, I just, these are just numbers and, and all this sort of backdoor uh, shenaniganry that I think most people don't, they get or don't care about. Here, here's what I don't get, and, and I'm sort of stealing from my buddy Andrew Wilkow about this. The Republicans have the House, they have the Senate, they have the President. They have the will of the people, quite frankly, and that's, that's, why, that's why these elections have been handed 
to the, to the Republicans. Why are they so afraid of doing what they said they were going to do, which was to just repeal it, get rid of it? I, I, I feel like we're playing another game, and it has to do with in, uh, keeping power more than it is doing right. what they said they were going to do. It really doesn't seem that much different to me. I'm not an economist. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a retired Green Beret, but I look at that, I go, what's, what's the big deal? Well, Bowling, I'm going to give you an opportunity here because those that, that do feel like, yes, this has been a mandate by the American people for conservative leadership in all its forms, but this doesn't feel that conservative. I, and, and when the House bill came out, I, I was sitting right there on the five, and I said, this is a, the, the day it came out, I said, this is terrible. Mm. This is dead yeah. on arrival, and I got a lot of pushback because I'm very, very close with the Trump administration. I got calls. I said, to, guys. You, you've done, why have you given Paul Ryan and leadership this, cast them this role? And they said, don't worry, Ryan came back, leadership said, don't worry, we have the conservative caucus, we have the Freedom Caucus on board, we're going to deliver you this, this bill. Mm -hmm. And it turned out you couldn't deliver the bill because that was a bad bill yeah. from the, from the get-go. The House the bill was bad. Yeah. The problem is the Senate bill is no better. Mm -hmm. It's the same bill. Yes, maybe a couple of tweets on it. Yeah. It doesn't bend the cost curve down. Giano, it doesn't. So, so, they so don't this, save any so money this, in this, so, so this No, no, no. It me, might be more expensive. Me, what, 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 this it could, could end up costing the American people a lot more money. I, I, it, it, what, what I really, and I said to him at the time, I said, you guys, you need to put this health care thing aside. I know you made a promise. Repeal and, and replace Obamacare. Get to that. Get to your tax. Get to your tax reform first, because universally that helps everyone. But the job isn't complete. We have next week. We have senators that are going to come together and they're going to negotiate something that they feel is better. How do we pay for it? I know that's a large consideration, but just like we've seen with any other bill that has come out, it all it's comes a huge with a discussion. Well, yeah, they've course, already had a, to Ebony's point. To Ebony's point, they've already had seven years, and they've had seven years of saying, let us fix mm -hmm. this. This is a disaster. Yeah. You need us because this has to be fixed. And people said, okay, here you go, fix it. And they're like, oh. I mean, <laughs> they, they should have the best bill of all time ready to go already. Well, and if they, they don't, they, they did what the Democrats are doing right now. They they ran for seven years on anti obamacare exactly. rather than developing a, replace, a, a better option for health care in, in America. This isn't better. This doesn't do any of the things that they said we need to get Obamacare. Yes, Obamacare is failing. It's an un un unmitigated disaster, right. and it's, and it's $2 getting trillion. worse. So I understand where you have to start to defund Obamacare, but re before you get into the replace part, just get something that works. That get, that's good for the American people in general, not just a few. Since the Republicans at this point sort of blew it, Right. Why wouldn't it be better at this point to do what they said they were going to do, repeal it, and maybe wait a couple of years while they get something that's, that's politically, so, politically, so, I'm going to let you in G. What do you politically, think? that's a problem, though, Terry, because if you, if yeah. you pull it back, right, the, the consequences and then it's going to all oh, timing midterms right around the corner. I do think if they're going to repeal it, I don't have a problem with them replacing it. Eric. The, the, you know there, that, but it's got to be better. Such it's got a to be better. simple temporary band aid on this problem. You you forget health health insurance prices. This is the, this isn't you have to solve the underlying problem of health care costs. You need to go to Completely. the hospitals yeah. and say, show us what you're charging for this procedure. Yeah. Show us what you're charging for this aspirin. Yeah. Let them compete with each other. Then you start to bring the health care costs down. Then you get the, the health care insurance. One last idea. And the way you do this, yep. the way you buy time to do this, is you remove the mandate from Obamacare. Leave Obamacare. Call it whatever you want. Call it Trump care. Just remove the mandate. Keep this infrastructure in place and then start doing the well, right. I certainly like the removal so, of the mandate. So that's, a, that's, that's an interesting concept in what you just mentioned. But to your point, I'm just interested. What happens to the 20 million people that are currently on Obamacare? That's what, what happened to, when they expanded the ex Medicaid expansion, there was about 14.5 million people that were added to the roles through Medicaid and CHIP. What happens to those folks? Here's well, the thing. That, that whole question is like, it's almost like, what about the children? And, and, and here's the... Here's, I, I get I mean, that's it. a legitimate question. No, 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 it's, no, it's a legitimate <laughs> question, but, but, but it, they ha okay. it was, what would happen before you had Obamacare? And also, here's, here's the thing. A lot of people like have Obamacare. They can't use it. I have a friend who yeah, broke his bad. rib. We, he went to like five different yeah. hospitals. He couldn't find anyone who took it. And to Eric's point, I completely agree. We've, we've kind of lost sight of what insurance should even mean. It should be insurance in case something catastrophic happens. You can't pay for that. Now you can use it for like weight loss training yeah. or something like that. So, so the prices keep raising and raise, rising and rising higher. And higher. Well, you know why? So if we on seven should million be million people to enter the marketplace, seven million young people to enter the marketplace, they Which, didn't. Of That's why we didn't. the price is rising. The price is also rising, G, because of the middleman, the insurance. Company. Exactly. Yes. That's what yes. I'm saying. <laughs> I think that I'm the lobbyist. What do you yeah. mean? <laughs> we should be paying for everyday health expenses out of pocket, and the 
costs would be much lower. Plus, the doctors would be held accountable to the patients rather to the insurance company. Instead, the idea is to use tax dollars to pay insurance companies more money, and that's the conservative answer. I'm, I'm sorry, but no, fifteen billion, 15 billion that's dollars a year, a year, a year. year. exactly. Years. I think okay. the American people also don't think we don't believe that we are going to get the straight talk from anybody on this. And, and people like to use the CBO numbers. Who, who are those guys? In, the they can't, budget office. They haven't scored I, this bill. I, I'm joking. Yeah. I was, <laughs> what I'm saying like, is, who are they? The most they are. Everybody <laughs> uses the CBO as a, hey, if it works for them, they like to quote the right, CBO. Yeah. The CBO does not predict the future. They don't know what's good. We're going to five years. Something could happen. Medical uh, breakthrough, something like that. Something that we don't even know. So the CBO, in, in many ways, is, is not particularly a great yardstick to do this on. And I just think, again, like you were saying, Eric, we're all acting like there was nothing before Obamacare. Uh, it, but there it, were so, a lot so, of sick people no, but, that but weren't the, being covered. No that's, the, but that's, 20, that's what I liked about Obamacare. That was about the only thing. The 20 million you're talking about, mm -hmm. more than half of them are basically new Medicare, Medicaid mm -hmm. uh, uh, mm -hmm. uh, but, assistance. But, and, uh, and, and the problem is Medicaid expansion. Care. You're talking about the 14 yeah. point. And health uh, insurance right. and health right. care so are not you, the same thing. So Just because you have an insurance plan doesn't mean you're getting the care that's you That's a piece need. of paper. If you remove this Obamacare thing, you're, you're not going to have 25 million people looking for insurance. They're still going to be taken care of. It'll be like 10. But also, though, and I think I agree with you here, Eric and Gianna, help me here. This Senate and this House legislation is still including a Medicaid expansion. So yeah, it looks yeah. like another, quote, entitlement program for conservative people that are looking for something that's cheaper and better. Well, they're pulling back on it. That's the point. I think with the uh, with the House version, it was to pull back immediately or rather not allow for new people coming onto the system that have that kind of coverage expansion of Medicaid. This one is about two to four years. So there are things that are happening. And I, and I got to tell you, we cannot discount the conversation, the discussion. This was considered a draft bill, a discussion bill, if you will. And now we're having the discussion. And senators are watching this program We're right now. Yeah. And, and, they, and they're saying, let's hey, maybe. Say, yeah. Let's say Rand Paul, Mike Lee, Ted Cruz, and Ron Johnson, the four senators who have said they, they're not in favor of this bill, we, they somehow figure out, figure out a way to get those votes. The way they're going to do it is to make it so up their alley, the Freedom Caucus, uh, Libertarian, whatnot, that the moderate um, Republicans are going to say, I'm not for it now. Then you have a senator in... Uh, Vermont, you have a senator uh, in Maine, I'm sorry, in, you have a senator in Alaska. Alaska, saying, which is I don't want this up, either up, if it up, becomes up. too conservative. Yeah. I, I, that's why I said to, to the Trump administration, jumping off the first major piece of legislation being health care, one sixth of the economy, mm -hmm. a trillion dollars a year may not have been the right the most complicated know, thing right. to fix you yeah. know, the most complicated versus i well, God, wasn't this always right. the plan tax reform. It's, it's, tax reform makes more sense it, yes but the whole point of working with obamacare first was to be able to get some of those savings and push them over uh, that, was, that sounds that was very the principle. part horse to me john well, that's like, when I, you, you have can't, if you can't uh, put that as the mandate for the but they don't know what to do if i have a list of things i have to do i generally don't start with a thing I don't know how to do yet. I make sure I know how to do it before I start it. And especially if I want to be telling everybody I'm starting it. I don't want to embarrass myself, and that's what they've done here. I think well, it's all part leaders. of the idea, you though, too. If you think about, wasn't this part of the plan? Gonna... Wasn't this part of the plan when they, when they introduced the Affordable Care Act? Because look what's going on right now. Once you put this stuff in place, which they did, which they rammed down our throat, this was going to happen. And they knew this was going to happen, whether they lost power or not. They knew that once you give people things, once you put these entitlement programs in place, Imagine if you take them away. Yeah. You hate grandma. You hate kids. You hate people with diabetes. This is exactly what's happening that, right that's now. Fine, this is, they knew this and, was and I, don't, I don't even uh, disagree or question what you're saying, but ultimately the people of this country have elected Republican leadership yeah. to give them something better, and I think it's incumbent upon our leadership. I think the first thing yeah. they did was yeah. to repeal it. I think yeah. this is a good and start. And they ran these Republican leadership yeah. on Ryan, this issue. Paul Ryan. I repeal We need yeah. to re repeal and replace and replace. Obamacare, and then for seven years you came up with it. your thumbs. Yes. Now it's just Hopefully, keep it and tweak it. Hopefully it's just nego opening negotiations. It is. It is. I still don't have any hair, by the way. Now that he has no secret tapes of his conversation with former FBI director James Comey. What's all this fallout about the Russia Pro? Back in a moment. One of 2017's great mysteries, whether President Trump had tapes of private conversations with James Comey finally coming to an end. The president tweeting today, quote, 
With all of the recently reported electronic surveillance intercepts, unmasking, and illegal leaking of information, I have no idea whether there are tapes or recordings of my conversations with James Comey, but I did not make and do not have any such recordings. What if this was just a ploy for him to find out if they were recording things in the White House so he could know how much he could wild out or not? That was. So, I, so <laughs> did, by, the way, by the way, nothing. Eric was like, yeah, that's great. Oh, I'm joking. I think this was, this was a brilliant tweet. Uh, look at that tweet again. I don't know if, you, if you can put it up, producers, again, but it's amazing how he covered every single base. He basically said, I don't know. Maybe there are, but maybe there aren't also. And there may be, but I certainly don't have them. I didn't do it and I don't have them. Now, maybe there are tapes. Maybe someone else has the tapes. Maybe there aren't tapes. Who knows? He basically, what he did was he, counselor, Mm -hmm. He limited his liability. Yes, he did that. And he kept the door <laughs> open for the possibility that there are still tapes. Yes, Eric. It was very strategic in that way. I agree. But I guess I'm just too much in my feelings right now. <laughs> I'm very sad. I really Y'all wanted the tapes. tapes. I was looking forward to these tapes. Know? Where the tapes? Where the tapes at? Where are the receipts? But you know what's interesting? I've been reading the articles all day today, and the media headline has been, Trump said there were tapes. There are no tapes. When he never said that there were tapes, mm -hmm. he said they better hope, hope. there aren't any tape. Exactly. And that's the way I read it. And I think this is another media story blown out of proportion with anything to do with Donald Trump. Give you an example. Back in December, there was an article, I think by the Washington Post, forgive me if it wasn't. They said Trump is a liar. He said he was 6'3", but his driver's license said he's 6'2". <laughs> This is guy out of control yeah. to the point that you can't say anything. He can't say, I'm walking down the street and there was gum on my shoe. Then they'll say, oh, what, you think you're too royal to have gum on your shoe like an average person? Yeah. This is, has, it has to stop. Right. right. To say that he lied here is a lie. He never said, I have tapes. He doesn't, maybe he thought he was right. potentially being recorded in these meetings because of exactly what he said in the tweets, all of these intercepts and all this intense surveillance going on. It makes perfect sense to me. And if he's been watching Scandal, they're taping everything. Exactly. <laughs> it's kind of clever. I mean, you got to give, got to give Donald Trump credit. Uh, it's kind of clever, almost in a high schooly way, where it's like, maybe I do and maybe I don't. <laughs> you don't know, do you? And like you said, it was not clear. He never said, I don't, I got tapes. You better hope. Good on him. He, I, he just, what, I don't even, I, I don't know if Donald Trump does it intentionally all the time, but he is just crushing the media every day, every dang day. He just, because he, when he says something, they attack it for exactly whether it's correct or not. Yeah. Even when the media may have a I case, agree. The they media, still look bad. They, they always look bad on this guy. They take the bait. They take mm -hmm. the bait every single time. And I think uh, there's some, I don't know, I don't want to be too cynical. I think that they are obsessed with maybe the ratings draw that comes from, from that Trump yeah, kind of bait. Yeah, totally. Can, can I be more cynical? Yeah, go ahead. They hate him so much. Yeah. The general media hates him so much. They'll take anything. They'll take any sort of little bait and blow it out of proportion. A good example is how they were sure that Georgia 6 was going to be a referendum oh, on yeah. Trump. <laughs> yeah. sure Trump oh, was going to Hold on, wait, wait, Eric. The dis disappointment amongst the mainstream media when Trump won, or I'm sorry, the GOP won, was palpable. No, that was yeah. bad. It was a referendum on Trump. They were in line with the policies of the Trump administration. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. They want to repeal and replace of Obamacare. They want tax reform, and they want an infrastructure bill. So it was a referendum. Yeah, and this yeah. is the problem. They set themselves up for the okie doke, right? Yeah. They put all that into it. You're exactly right, Eric. They hyped it up to be this big statement around what America thinks about Donald Trump, and uh, obviously they weren't it, it, ready it for what, that. It's what they think about Donald yeah. Trump. That's what they're doing. They're 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 portraying they're what they're all, they're, they're projecting, projecting their own projecting. opinion of Donald yeah. Trump onto the uh, the vast majority of Americans and Americans are rejecting that soundly big time right. did you see the, the the speech last night I mean I he granted a it was kind of a campaign <laughs> yeah. but that a was a campaign <laughs> yeah. Trump that people loved. Yeah. He, he was back in his, his element and the more they get frustrated the more the media gets frustrated the better it gets because whether Donald Trump is intentionally or with with malice of forethought mm. having them trip up they trip up because they, like you said they're just so blinded with hate mm. for this cat that they will do anything. And by the way, the American people who don't read these bills, who, who have to work and are tired of the politician stuff on both sides, they look at that guy, uh, like, that's my drunk uncle at Thanksgiving. Yeah. He's hey. right. He's, He's always right. the most Great fun point, one at Thanksgiving. Elliot Stabler. I do like that. He gets that a lot, actually. <laughs> he looks like Elliot Stabler. I get that a lot. So don't, don't get out of line, none of you. All right, absolutely. Uh, yeah. He is the best one. I, oh, him and Olivia would have been so good together. You know I what know. I mean? I always oh. wanted it to happen, especially after his marriage didn't work out. All right, up next. <laughs> <laughs> President Trump lets it rip in Iowa, debuting some bold proposals on immigration and the border wall. Stay with us. <laughs>
President Trump serving up a big slice of red meat to his supporters on immigration while in Iowa last night. The time has come for new immigration rules which say that those seeking admission into our country must be able to support themselves financially and should not use welfare for a period of at least five years. Well, that proposal would reportedly expand on a law in place since the Clinton administration and make more categories of federal benefits off limits to immigrants illegal immigrants. The president also revealing details about a long rumored accessory to his planned border wall. We're talking about the southern border. Lots of sun, lots of heat. We're thinking about building the wall as a solar wall so it creates energy and pays for itself. You're the first group I've told that to. A solar wall. Makes sense. Let's see. We're working it out. We'll see. Solar wall panels. Beautiful. I mean, actually, think of it. The higher it goes, the more valuable it is. It's like. I love this idea. Yeah. This is the best idea. And by the way, by the way Trump, Trump says in the middle of that, gold. my idea. Pretty good idea. Right. Yeah. It's, it's gold. I thought it was, like, we're working on it. We just started working on it in this it moment. Is moment. It's, yeah. Wow. It's and gold. this is a way to get Mexico to pay for it's it. Gold. They'll buy the electricity. It's, it's gold. We had to do that, though, because. The, oh, go ahead. It's the funniest thing ever. It was really because good. He's saying, oh, we're going to build a wall and the libs will never go for it. Wait. Out of solar panels. Yeah, boom. I mean, to have that happen Drop in your brain mic. is an amazing thing. Yeah, it's like, yeah. and gonna, then he can say, "We're going to build a vegan oh, wrong. wall." Democrats, you don't like solar power. Yeah, yeah. 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 He'll have like Leonardo DiCaprio, and had, George Clooney, like advocating for it. They're, like, he had they're to guys. do this though, because I mean, it, this was like the wall thing. We kept every day, people like, "Okay, that's cool." About, where's the wall? So, I mean, he had to come back to this, and and this is. Pretty funny way to do it, Gianna. This wall is getting built. I think it, it, I think there's a strong <laughs> possibility that, that, that it will be built. But you know what? What's interesting? I can't imagine why Democrats are so against it when Hillary Clinton and Bill Clinton both supported it back in the 90s. Mm -hmm. In addition, if I were to give a very quick personal narrative, my father, my grandparents plumbing, small business, and, and construction. Back in the 90s, business was good. They were doing really well. And then illegal immigrants, people started using illegal labor, driving down the cost that they could actually build something. I it, think, can, can, Ebony, it can, 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 I, uh, can I tweet Trump's proposal on so, solar panels on the, the border wall? Go ahead. Have companies sponsor a mile of solar. They'll pay, they'll even pay for the solar panels, I gave him put the their name on that. <laughs> I'm talking about companies. I just no, gave him that. Did you steal his idea? Wait, 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 I said company, and he was like, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. companies. Oh, <laughs> I, I can imagine Google like to sponsor a few miles. Well, maybe not Google. <laughs> not Google. No, but let, let me say this. Sorry. Bring that to the yeah, Paris. Google, Google. Maybe a gun maker. Re-enter like, re yeah. the Paris Climate Uber. Agreement by saying we're going to have a Solar border wall. Okay, let me, let me let me address Giado's point though, right? I hear what you're saying about your grandfather's story, and my mother's also a small business owner. Yeah. Has that concern as well? But this is the thing about the the first of all, Hillary and Bill Clinton, they evolve off the time on issues. Mm. So no one is paying any attention to what they used to be for or against. She also used to be for transatlantic trade, and we see what she is on that now. So that's irrelevant. But People are not necessarily against the wall. I necessarily think it's the, the intentionality they think it's behind it. I know I use that word a lot because that's what it is. If this was a wall, a wall against the Canadian border, I don't think you would have this emotional yeah. response to it. What people are responding to is a feeling that they get, Eric, that they feel the wall is specifically to keep certain people out of our country. Yeah. That's, it, that's, it, yeah no, 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 it's not true, a, no, 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 no. They, they think that certain people are brown people. I'm just going to be straight up with you. Well, that's well, their okay, response. So that's granted, their response. granted yeah, that's that that would be the case because it's a southern border wall not a northern border wall as right. well right. but the fact remains that about somewhere around 80 plus percent of the illegals in the country come from our southern border yep. that's where they're coming from. they're coming up through south america through mexico and planting here and taking jobs the point is some of I'll, them taking jobs that we, we won't do no okay. doubt yeah right absolutely okay. no doubt and okay. as you know i'm, I'm more open-minded about Im legal, legal immigration, legal immigration. than, than yes. most conservatives would be yeah. but but the point being the cost of the wall, whether it's 20, 30, 40 billion dollars, right. mm -hmm. the savings of not having all those illegal immigrants planted here, t getting and, getting uh, health care, getting subsidies, getting benefits, getting food stamps right. would pay for the wall well, itself. The welfare thing is often pitched as a sort of libertarian solution to not needing a wall. So it makes you sound like a yeah. jerk, but don't say don't come here. But if you do, you get a bunch of stuff that's not really going to work.
I'm not sure I agree with you totally about the whole brown people thing. I, I, I think, and this is, again, why a lot of people are upset in the United States, because we're being told constantly we're racist. And right. We're, no, no but, I'm well, not saying I, that's I my feel, position. I'm just saying I think that's the feeling. Well, I, that I, I'm not sure that's true. I think most people actually, I think if, if, the, if the southern border happened to be because of climate, geography, and, and, and ecology peopled by blonde-haired, blue-eyed people that were pouring over the border that didn't speak our language, that were, that were drawing off of our, our, our money and our welfare systems, I think you'd have the same effect. I think it'd be so? Yeah, yeah, I, I do. do. So for, first really? and foremost, okay. first and foremost him mentioning a wall has driven down uh, legal immigration mm -hmm. by 64%, right? That's great. Right? That's great. So, but, but to, yeah. your, to what you were just mentioning about the evolution, mm -hmm. we can talk about other politicians that wanted to evolve, like Rahm Emanuel, mm -hmm. who's now mm -hmm. for sanctuary cities. Mm -hmm. Why is he for sanctuary cities? Right. Because he needs the Hispanic vote. That's the reason. Yeah. Yeah. So when they decided that they need more Hispanics to vote for him uh, versus the uh, white middle class, and then they said, oh, we're, exactly. we're, so we're, we're going to come, out, we're gonna come yeah, out. I'm, the I'm not really pro a Clinton evolution. Yeah. <laughs> Can you explain to me yeah. why a softer border policy is, is uh, pro-Hispanic? No, I don't think it is. I just feel like I'm in favor of two walls. The only vote here That's are all. the ones who are here legally, right? I'm totally into it, Eric. Family, I, I'm right. not opposed to the wall. I just think we should have two. That's all. Two walls. Mm-hmm. We got but, the, but that's, <laughs> a, but that's <laughs> almost that's a politically too correct too thing because the problem isn't from our, our northern border. I know. Border. I'm just, that was, oh, I thought you were serious. That was anti -Canadian? I thought she was, was being serious. <laughs> I, don't even know, I don't know what's going on anymore on this show. <laughs> right, we're going to leave it right there. Nancy Pelosi, one of my favorites, feeling the heat as the Democratic Party melts down. Are her leadership days numbered? We can hope so. We'll be right back. <laughs> Welcome back to the Fox News Specialists. Our specialists today are Gianno Caldwell and Terry Shepard. Let's continue the conversation. <laughs> Nancy Pelosi is facing an uprising from fellow Democrats with frustration boiling over about the party's flops in recent special elections. You That's think right. Nancy Pelosi is more toxic than Donald Trump? You know what? The honest answer is in some areas of the country, yes, she is. I'm not going to pretend that this is an easy conversation to have. It's not easy speaking truth to power. Nancy Pelosi was a great speaker. She is a great leader. But her time has come and gone. Yeah, well, but for now, Leader Pelosi is disagreeing with that. I feel very confident in the support that I have in my caucus. I'm a um, master legislator. I am a, uh, a strategic, politically astute leader. I am uh, uh, my uh, uh, leadership is recognized by many around the country, and that is why I'm able to attract the support that I do, which is essential uh, to our election, sad to say. Mm, someone certainly thinks highly of herself. President Trump couldn't help rubbing some salt in the wound today, tweeting, quote, I certainly hope the Democrats do not force Nancy P. out. That would be very bad for the Republican Party. And please let crying Chuck stay. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can know. take that one step further. I, in fact, I did take it one step further. Go for it. So Nancy Pelosi called herself a master legislator, strategic, politically astute leader. We went and did some brain room checking. 2010, 12, 14, and 16 elections, she has, under her leadership, uh, majority leader, then minority leader, lost 63 House seats. So I agree with Trump, and I say I'm all for Pelosi. <laughs> Very nice. Very I'm nice, Eric. these bumper stickers made, and we'll send you one if you send us. Self-addressed. I did very nice. did an analysis, and I saw 66 seats, so that was interesting. Well, I got, yeah, I, I had 63. Either way, yeah. she's losing. Yeah. I didn't do, I didn't do, I didn't do any analysis because I'm lazy. Because <laughs> I, I kind of, I'm lazy. And we all know the reason that, that she's, the, the knives are out is not because she's a far left uh kind of a nut job that's where the dems kind of are these days yeah. it's because she's losing yeah mm. you, she's not producing and it's they come on every day well you, uh, this is a georgia thing it's it, no you lost you know what over and over you're, again. you're right where's my camera camera okay i got a special message for the dnc
fire all of your consultants because they have you on a winning losing streak. <laughs> you gotta yeah. get rid of them. She should go out. Get rid of them. Get rid of them. Get go, rid of them. Go, go out to the woods and hang out with Hillary. You or whatever. Should, they yeah. should. Yeah. She should, yeah. she should do yes. that. Absolutely. But the truth of the matter is, the Democrats have not been honest for a very long time. They've said, "Oh, it's all good. We're gonna do the resistance, the resistance campaign." Well, the resistance campaign is working because they're resisting Democrats, Republicans, Independents are resisting their strategy. You know what it is, John? I don't think it's that they're not being honest. I think the Democrats are delusional. No, okay. and I, no I'm yeah. very serious. They are literally living in an echo chamber, a tunnel vision. When you see the President of the United States, who is a Republican, saying, please let live, <laughs> I don't know how much clearer it can be that you are on the wrong side of this. Well, why, <laughs> why, if you want the, the, the coach of the team that keeps on, you, you well, play that's every right, day. That's exactly. my point. That's yeah. exactly my point. She's just that still that standing there going, I am the best. No, yeah. I am a master. <laughs> I am amazing. I would love that kind of delusional self-esteem in a way. It must be fun, but it's not great for the it, Democratic Party. It's horrible, horrible for the party. ratcheted up today. Uh, uh, Representative Tim Ryan, a Democrat, called Nancy Pelosi more toxic than Donald Trump. Think she about is. that. That's heavy. Yeah. She is. Yeah. A, a Democrat parts of the calling country. his leader. I mean, he so, was, so then this becomes the question, though, Eric. If they feel this way and this uh, the Congresswoman wants to get up here and talk about speaking truth to power and all that crap, I think that's really easy to do on a cable news program. Right. I think what's more important is in the leadership meetings yeah. of the DNC, what do they step do? up and yeah. put something. They had an opportunity, Eric, to put in some new leadership to be responsive to the wipeout they got in November, and instead they doubled down on the stale old baggage leadership yeah. that has gotten them nowhere. And what is baggage. Baggage. And honestly, old baggage, and honestly, she said. Old baggage. Uh, you and I have had many discussions yes. on this off camera, off air. And the truth of the matter is, and I go back to that part about them not being honest or delusional in your words. Sure. The truth of the matter is, in 2008, when Republicans took that shellacking because President Obama came in, Obama won and they won everything else. There was a Republican congressman that said the Republican brand is dog food. He was yeah. honest. Mm -hmm. The Republican activists were honest. We need to retool. We did. And we won the House and we won the Senate. And now we have the White House. So we have the power, but we were honest with ourselves first and foremost. They haven't really okay. been doing you wanna be honest? You want to be honest, Gianno? Go ahead. This health care bill? You think that's going to be okay for Republicans in 2018? I think that we're going to further the discussion because, into next we, week. We, we flipped the House back to Republicans <laughs> under Nancy Pelosi's leadership in 2010 because of Obamacare. <clears throat> now we're offering up a similar, a similar health care bill. You think the Republicans are going to eat it in 2018? No, no. I think the Republicans are going to win in 2018. We have no choice. We have no party to defeat us, pr pretty much. They're, they're lost. Be careful but that's with not the that, point. though. The, Be careful the, with that, Gianno. Because if you if you expect to win by default, as what I hear Eric saying, you that, might be setting yourself up for the same type of... That's exactly what happened in 2016. Yeah. Look at Trump. He's still having campaign remember rallies, those town essentially. Halls? Do you remember how effective those, those town halls were, where, where grassroots organizations, we'll call them Tea Party, call them whatever, were going into Democrats in town halls the summer before the 2018 election and just dismantling the Democrats, you don't think these Republican uh, Congress people who are all up in 2018 are going to feel the same heat from Democrats? We're repealing halls? Obamacare. I consider it a repeal and we're going to further the conversation into next week. And the better replacement. It's the not better perfect. Replacement, don't get it right. The better replacement wrong. is where? Oh, yeah, even the Republicans are okay. Really calling so who do you guys? Who do you guys think you guys are? You guys are because this is what they pay you dudes the big bucks for. <laughs> you're Who's, Elliot Stabler. They pay you yeah. the really big bucks. Yeah, yeah right. You and you're and you're all welcome for your freedom as a special forces guy. <laughs> who who do you think is a, is a good candidate to replace Miss Nancy Pelosi? Do they have one? No, well, that's this, the this guy. The guy just Ryan. Tim Ryan. Ryan. But he he actually ran against her for the. But I rub it. But he didn't win. Do you think now they're gonna have they have they are they seeing the light now? He's gotta be it. Yeah. Okay. He's gotta be it. He has to. All right. Straight ahead, the mainstream media freaking out over President Trump and his comments last night about the poor and the economy. Stay tuned. The mainstream media is overwhelmingly biased against President Trump, not slipping past many Americans. Check this out. A new poll from Rasmussen finds that 50 percent of likely voters think most reporters are biased against the president, while just 4 percent think, think most reporters are biased in Trump's favor. Case in point, the mainstream media is losing its mind after his remarks last night about top, top economic positions in his administration and who he's hiring. We can't have the world taking advantage of us anymore. And I love all people, rich or poor. But in those particular positions, I just don't want a poor person. Does that make sense?
<laughs> All right, so he, uh, <laughs> apparently our producer slipped that sound bite in at the end of that time. Uh, let me start with you, Gianno, because we oh. were talking about this. Yes. The Harvard study out last month. <laughs> CNN, 90, uh, the Harvard study, 93% yeah. of the stories about Trump are negative. Yeah. NBC, 93% negative. CBS, 91%. And New York Times, 87% negative about Trump. And that is a... A liberal Harvard study. I know. That's so interesting. And I'm, the 4% that they mentioned that was biased in favor of Trump, were you the entire 4% of that one? Or? No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. You had to I've been drinking the Trump vodka. Sorry about that. <laughs> um, seriously, I think the media definitely has something out against Trump for a couple different reasons. Think back to the election. During a primary, they wanted to have him onto their programs. I used to watch Trump interviews just to hear Trump because it was entertaining. And they loved him. They loved him. They didn't think he was going to win. But when he won the primary, that's when they turned all the alarm bells on. So now, since they slept at the wheel and they're continuing to sleep at the wheel because they think the American people are going to buy it, they're trying to angle as much as they can against Trump. What say you, Ab? <sighs> well, Eric, you know, I was saying during the break, I didn't vote for President Trump. However, even I am at a point where these updates come through my phone from some of these news networks, and it's like the petty never stops. Like, yeah. seriously, they are actually undermining their credibility as organizations, yeah. Eric, at this point. I think it's silly, and I think it's short-sighted. I'll finish with this. Um, you know, I think there are some things the president says that are outrageous. That made total sense to me. Why would yeah. we put someone who has not yeah. demonstrated responsibility in their own <laughs> well life in charge of the economic well-being of our country? That seems Sometimes silly. rich people aren't good with money. I understand like that. <laughs> I understand that. was very rich in 1991. Now, not so much. Fair enough. But if you're consistently <laughs> poor, I think yeah. it's fair to say you're not going to do Look, well with America's yeah, you, money well, either. Wait, no. You, and of course, and he was talking specifically about Wilbur Ross, whose specialty is restructuring failed companies. So in that case, yeah, it's a guy that's good with money. He's rich because he's good with money. Mm -hmm. That does right. make all the sense. All right, Terry, let me ask you. So I spent the morning in an oral surgeon's office, right? Big so, fun. A lot of fun. Uh, a lot of fun. Bone grafts, yeah. stitches, Ooh, blood. What? So here's the thing. Do you go to a dentist and when you show up and the guy has really bad teeth, do you just turn around and walk out? <laughs> <or> I wouldn't. <laughs> I, listen, you've seen me. I'm covered with tattoos. I wouldn't. If I was a, a woman, I wouldn't want me to be their OBGYN. There I'm, you go. <laughs> Wait, do you see where we're getting here? What I'm saying is I, I, I said I, I certainly agree. I'm just saying MC Hammer would not be good for the job. But you know, this this well, is actually isn't about no. this actually isn't about Trump in a way. <laughs> America can't touch this. <laughs> America, right here, the media hates you, and and you know it. The Ameri it, the media, the big media outlets loathe. They dis they dis disdain and they hate most uh, the middle Americans, and so. That's why they're so reflexive. That's why so many people reflexively defend Trump. They're defending themselves. Whether yeah, Trump, that's, that's whether Trump that's is buffoonish or not, it's almost like, did you just insult my friend? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's what this really is about. We and they have been exposed yeah. as 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 people who do you not like me. You calling me your friend? I was, <laughs> was I wrong to do that? Oh uh, no, it's very. Okay. And if I could take it a quick step further, we talk about during the primary how Trump would say things, and they would say. Oh, why are people still supporting Trump? Right. There were 42% of Americans, and I'm talking about white Americans specifically, that are living under the poverty line. His issues spoke to them. Exactly. Because they've been left out by Democrats and Republicans. And a lot of people and couldn't I'm, understand how someone who is so rich himself could connect and be the voice of those right. people. And I could. Exactly. Because he and wasn't he, pretending to tell them better. And I right. think that's the that's problem. Exactly. And he comes from humble beginnings. Uh, Remember, he got that small $1 million yeah. dollar <laughs> from his father. He very humble before we go, before we go and ask, hashtag Team Petty. I want to point out, Ebony, we, in that same Harvard study, yeah. Fox came in the most fair and balanced, 52-48, uh, negative positive on Trump. You can't get much more fair just and like balanced. That was mostly just fair you, Eric. Fair and balanced. <laughs> yeah. right there. When we circle back, we come back with our specialists, Gianno Caldwell and Terry Shepard. Don't go away. All right, it's time to circle back with our specialists today, Gianno Caldwell and Terry Shepard. Okay, first of all, I'm mad, Gianno, because you stole my circle back. <laughs> because I was the first to declare Terry an Elliott Stabler look-alike. He looked like it in the green the room. Split screen, I believe. <laughs> yep, there we go. Oh my there God. we go. Yes, had, like, seriously, is that not dead on or what? Crazy. That's pretty close, I guess. I think so. I'm flat. It's, it's, it is a compliment. That, that is, is a very compliment. I'm going to give you another compliment. The fact that you rescue older rescue dogs, mm. I yeah. think that is like the greatest, yeah. greatest thing Thank you, you can do. The whole someone's, got a, someone's got to love <laughs> them. I, I want, can you hold this up for me? <laughs> Thank you. Uh, hold it to camera. 
Hmm. <laughs> You're promoting them so much as Tinder is going to be popping tonight. Yeah. Yeah. This is awesome, by the way, too. Yeah, good luck. Good luck, Nancy. It's going to work out really well, well for Let's you. hope. We can only hope. Yeah. Okay. I don't know. I was gonna, the dog, how many dogs do you have now? Well, I lost one just a few months ago, and oh. I still got one left, and uh, I may get another old one. But I always go and volunteer at the shelter and walk them and stuff like that. And, and, if, I, and if an old one comes in my life, I'll get it. I always, you got to get the old ones because nobody wants them. I feel bad My now. wife wants them. Yeah. My wife, my Adrian, that's all she, once, once a week I come home, she's got a picture of a, like a 9, 10, 11-year-old dog. She's like, we're going to. Got to get them. Got to get them. we her. have a 13-year-old dog. And it's like, this, no, you, know, you yeah. can do it. You got room. <laughs> you can do it. All right, You're quick a question star. for you, Gianno. You covered the White House correspondence dinner. What was your most exciting interview? I think there was a couple. Don Lemon probably was the most interesting. Don Lemon took my mic. And he He's wanted friends. to interview uh, me. Are you familiar? Okay, okay. Really? Yeah. So yeah, I, I interviewed. Uh, I was covering the White House Correspondents' Dinner for Extra TV. Extra. Yeah, <laughs> yeah right. And that, that was fun. But I got to tell you something about the show. I'm a big fan, as you know. And the first show was probably one of the most exciting when you guys. Mm. Hey. You just wanted the opportunity to ask for Fox News, and we hey. love you for that. So thank you to our Fox News specialist today, Mr. Gianno Caldwell and Terry Shepard. And we want to thank you all for watching. Make sure you follow us on social media at Specialist FNC on both Twitter and Facebook. And by the way, our Facebook page is getting quite stacked with all kinds of commentary and videos from the show. Remember, 5 o'clock will never be the same. Keep tuned. Special reports up next. <laughs>Senate Republicans unveil their plan to repeal and replace Obamacare, and the measure may already be on life support. This is Special Report.